What is up? This is the Flyover Libertarian Podcast, where three unimportant people from an unimportant place give you the opinion that you didn't ask for. I am the Rural Rothbard, and today I am talking with my co-host, uh, Ioan Cap, and we are speaking to Control Pew. How are you doing, Mr. Pew? Oh, we're, we're alive and kicking, just uh, <laughs> uh, firing on about 300 different projects on the, in the background, so... What what is it that you do? What are you known for, and and how did you get into that? Real quick. So I am one of 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 a few retards from the internet. Um, we design and uh, we design uh, firearms, three D printable firearms, and then we post the the models, the instructions to complete them, the required additional parts, uh, all across the internet for free because we can because it's speech and art. And yes, fun. it is. It's speech and <laughs> art and data. Um, and that's actually, I've been following this uh, for a while. I, I kind of fell out of it. So I got started with the, the Cody Wilson and um, the Cody Wilson and uh, D- defense distributed days. Yep. And that really captured my imagination. Uh, I was like uh, around high school age. And so um actually got to be around firearms a lot more than I am right now. And so mm-hmm. just the the free speech argument for it and the just the, the engineering side was kind of interesting, but at the same time, just like it was so cool, um, kind of yeah. captured my imagination back in those days. Um, but I kind of stopped paying attention to it because there weren't any super fast developments um, as a new technology. It seemed like it just kind of slowly yep. built in small uh, communities, uh, guys like yourself working, uh, you know, working really hard to advance a new technology it's, it's pretty cool I, th- I think a lot of people went on, went a similar route they they saw the what is it 60 minutes cnn whoever did the the they put yeah. they, the big news story oh 3d print guns all you soccer <laughs> moms be be afraid and uh you know they had cody wilson out there shooting the liberator and that that was a big moment for a lot of people a lot of people paid attention to that and then, like you, like you said, there wasn't a lot of development after that. Um, so a lot of people sort of just walked away and sort of stopped paying attention. Some of us who didn't just collected on the internet and started paying attention. Um, I started watching at that time, and I kept watching through the years. I didn't really get involved until like 2017, 2018, um, when I was tra- starting to figure out, okay, things are getting interesting. There's a lot of development be- being done, you know, in the background that isn't being shared anywhere, um, except in this little community. Uh, what can I do to start pushing this forward and start, you know, maybe accelerating development a little bit? And so I started getting involved in doing the social media bit, and we put up the controlp.com, the website, and started pushing people into, because a lot of people struggle with, I this is, you know, there there's the, this is what I understand about 3D printing and firearms. And then this is the knowledge that it takes to build it. How do I jump that gap? There's like 10 steps in there to go from point A to point B. So we put together the getting started guide and how to really take your first 10 steps and figure out, okay, this is how I print. This is how to print uh, or how to run a 3D printer from people who like guns. So other people who like guns will like naturally resonate a little bit with that. And they'll come and pay a little more attention than they would if like, I don't know, 3D print whatever.com did did a did a similar guide so it helps sort of make that 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 transitional leap into printing and uh and get people started and then and then people get started printing like other people started coming into the community and being like oh my god this is awesome and understanding how to do it and uh and how to execute on these sort of ideas and uh i guess it it, it sort of it's this almost self self fulfilling thing from that point on it's it's really just some of those people uh, can contribute then which is right. awesome oh yeah and uh, we've seen a lot of growth from that uh just with people coming in new ideas new development um people taking the next 10 steps after that and learning this is how i make a model and just sitting down with calipers and banging them out so it's been uh it's been a fun couple of years watching everything sort of just explode and not in anyone's hands <laughs> I actually jumped in again last year when the FGC video came out. I think it was the Vice documentary. 
which yep. is kind of embarrassing because that's actually a little bit late in the game, it sounds like, for how the community had been kind of snowballing. But it was I actually, mean, I just stopped paying attention because it took so much effort and so much work to stay right. up to date and involved in these sub-communities, uh, uh, obvious, that, that are just involved in, in talking to each other. Right. But I had a friend tell me about, like, oh, what, you don't know about FGC? Like, oh, you need to you need to catch up. And so can you fill me in? Like, what happened between the, the Cody Wilson liberator, liberator uh, experiment and, and the FGC uh, documentary last year? Right. So, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> a lot, but also not a lot. Like, yeah. it'll fill... New dip- technologies can be kind of right. slow, but they snowball. For sure. It, yeah, it, it depends on how you write it, because like <laughs> it's either one line or like a whole chapter. So um, there is Cody Wilson and then there is a, a bunch of people sort of related to that who are working on a similar similar thought process, but less connected. Um, called Foscad, and they were very active in communally getting everything up and running. And then uh the the Foscad group started curating their archive of just everything under the sun and pulling it all together in place. And then uh Jay Stark and Ivan the Troll got together to found Deterrent Dispensed, which was the sort of it, it started as like a project team to sort of correct some of the early models from DefCAD and that were circulating uh, to get things that were a- that actually worked well, and start to optimize those models for 3D printing specifically. So, um, you know, when you look at like an AR-15 lower, it's got some pretty thin features. The buffer tower itself uh, goes through a lot of stress when you're firing. So you would see that crack off in a lot of early early AR-15 models um, because it just wasn't designed to deal with the material and the force that was. Put on, put onto it. So you would see optimizations come out after that. Of like, there's a an AR-15 that had a, a cutout for a, a off the hardware store shelf U-bolt that to go through it to sort of strengthen that area. And I think a lot of people saw that and that started like getting them to pay attention. Okay, so we 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 the so deterrence dispense sort of spearheaded the transition from we're gonna copy stuff that's commercially available to start to optimize stuff specifically for 3d printing and for for manufacture using this sort of technology and materials and then the next step uh that was taken was sort of because the the other issue that we found looking back was a lot of the models that existed didn't really work very well um they were rough approximations i guess they looked pretty close but they weren't exact so like uh, I, I know a lot of people are going to say, okay, you could t- you could pull the 3D models out of the world of guns, and that'll be give you one-to-one, but the world of guns models aren't exact. They aren't functional models. You can't just export them, print them. So uh, the next step was we, we uh, beyond the, the enhancement for this, mater- or for this material and manufacturing process was we were starting to generate the documentation that people would need who aren't familiar with these platforms, these these uh, these firearms as firearms to go and put them together. So we're writing, you know, thorough documentation. We're providing build tutorials. We're providing all this instruction on top of the model itself and then putting that all in one package and then putting that out on the internet forever. So it's not out on the, the I guess the sort of operative goal is it's not public until it's final, which is a rare thing for the internet because once it, <laughs> once it's public, then it lives on the internet forever because the way that our communities sort of work and the people in this space sort of work is they'll go, they'll download it and they'll keep it forever because yeah. it might one day get deleted from the internet. Get a lot of, get a lot of requests. Uh, constant, constant flood. The, uh, the most interesting today, the, the most interesting one from today was for a, uh, a desert Eagle build. A printable desert Eagle frame. See that that's actually related to one of the questions I got for this. So, <laughs> Oh God, what what are the what are the constraints and limitations that you deal with when you're starting to approach stuff like twelve gauge shotgun, Desert Eagle, large caliber? I mean, you start to get into the material, the specifics on the material, but even then, like you can creatively problem solve that. So it really be, it's really less of 
a material problem and more of a creativity problem. Hmm. So how how creative of a problem solver are you? Because we're not doing anything like new in the in the realm of firearms. Like we've been, th- these are the same sort of problems that they've been solving since the turn of the century, as far as firearm development goes. So we're just we're 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 acknowledgedly we're we're acknowledging that we're using a subpar material and then solving modern <laughs> problems with it. Uh, I'm I'm essentially a boomer. Uh, when it comes to all of this stuff, uh, I, I really don't have a lot of working knowledge. Um, uh, but but one thing that, like, I just remember that interview that you brought up earlier about Cody Wilson. And, and I remember just the most, he just had that most BA response to the question of, like, oh, are you, do you feel comfortable about it? He's like, I don't care how comfortable you are. We are. It's, it's out there. So, so I just thought that was such an amazing response. And, but I wondered, I'm sure that's not the response he gives to uh, ordinary people, <laughs> the people that he's, he's uh, talking to in his everyday life. I wonder, do you have like a, a response that you give when people start being like, but wait, isn't that dangerous or isn't that a, a way to give weapons to, I don't know, you know, <laughs> like do you have the, a response? I mean, it, it's it's pretty much in the same vein. It's I I don't I don't care. I think the people who are seeking these things are entitled to them anyway. Um, you know, people want to ask about dangerous felons, and I don't think they're dangerous felons because if they were, they'd be in prison. Uh, which is a whole other other like. There's a long like I try not to get political, but there's a whole long politics on there with me where I just. Like I don't care, <laughs> you know, if uh, if they're released and back in society, they should be, you know, not felons anymore. So yep. fuck it, I get. Sorry, yep. are, we, are we cursing? On this? I don't know. <laughs> we haven't talked about that. Okay. <laughs> we haven't really talked about that. <laughs> anyway, funny. yeah, fuck it. I think I'll play. Um, I'll play that. I'll play that section of the um, Cody Wilson interview because it's so powerful when he's like, they're like arguing with him about whether it's okay or whether it's right or like if the government should do something about it he's like no you don't get it it's over (laughs) it's like it's out there it's over like this is possible what makes you comfortable with a world where people can pump out guns in their garage anytime they want to what's going to make me comfortable is when people stop coming to this office and and acting like there's a debate about the debate is over the guns are downloadable the files are in the public domain you cannot take them back you can adjust your politics to this reality you will not ask me to adjust mine yeah, and it's it's only getting further from their grasp. So yeah, and I think the thing that was underappreciated at the time was that uh, the technology didn't have to be perfect at the time. Like all he did was prove that it could work, right. and that it. Um, he, if you read his book too, he's very much about the just the political theory of this is data, this is speech. Yep. Um, I this is an experiment to show you you can't do anything. That's too bad. He didn't need to have a technically perfect or en- yeah. perfectly engineered product and, to uh, show everybody else uh, what his message was. He could just have, you know, one shot, even if it breaks. Right. And the, the, the Liberator, I mean, people ask me about it today, about how good it is. I mean, it's a horrible gun. Yeah, it yeah, is it's the, not the, useful. <laughs> right. It, it is slightly more advanced than, like, a piece of pipe and a hammer. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's, it's like, it's I don't not think he good... would disagree either. Right. Yeah, I don't think he would disagree with that. But it's, it's not the point. The point was to right. just the, the, the point theory was the of proof it. of concept. Yeah, it totally you know, was. And, and it, it brought to light to a lot of people um, the fact that this can be done. And, you know, interested parties like myself have been paying attention. And we collected in those other other circles that were doing the, you know, the, the active development on the topic and started sort of congregating there. It, it brought the whole thing to light for us. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. It certainly helped move us along. Uh, but yeah, it was a great proof of concept. And then we spent the last, I say we, that's very royal. And I don't, I don't, it's, it's weird. Uh, the community has spent probably the better part, well, since then, you know, evolving the idea and perfecting it. So it's such an interesting thing. Like, you know, uh, uh, that's just such a thing, interesting thing about just the future in general. You've got like you go back and watch old shows what they thought the future was going to look like and uh 
many of the things that they picture happening are just ramped up versions of they were of things they were already seeing in their world. But in reality, advancement is just something someone comes up like who who would have thought that the next step in the two A struggle was just someone was going to find a way to make a gun on your computer like that was just that's outrageous. And we're seeing that with everything, like with Bitcoin, even it's people just can't comprehend a paradigm shift. And the people that keep arguing, the people that want to make an 80 percent lower legally a gun. They just don't understand a paradigm shift. And that was the other thing I wanted to ask about. It seems inevitable that eventually they're going to make an 80% lower uh, legally a firearm. It's like, um, <laughs> what do you, I don't even know. Like, it seems so dumb because on one hand, it's like anything could be gun at that point. But it's where do we go from there? <laughs> it's nerf for nothing. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm serious. We're we've got a couple of guys playing with like using Nerf guns as the yeah as that. as what is very clearly legal by the yeah. legal definition the receiver. It was like a it was like a pin in a Nerf gun, and it was right. Like, you just loaded in a Nerf gun, and there you go. So next, after that, we're gonna we're gonna start playing with like uh, probably. Uh, I'm excited for black powders because that's really fun, and you can make it at home off some you know relatively available stuff from whatever Menards or home gardening stores. I I forget which one. Bomb cars. There we go. Bomb cars. Yeah. Uh, hey, Iowa. Hey, we go. Yeah. Iowa. No. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it is, like I said, we're, we're already there. We've already, like, they're talking about, oh, we need to, the, these 80% have been on the market for 20 years now. You know, they're, they're, like it's it's well twenty years probably like fifteen is the whole assault weapon ban. But anyway, like you know they've been on the market for as far as I'm concerned forever, um, and we're already like fifteen iterations past that as far as the development of what arms are available to the common person. You know if they want to put in the effort to make them. So, you know nothing that we're. Well, I say nothing. 90% of the stuff that, that's th being 3D printed doesn't really fit an 80% definition. Um, and even if it did, well, you're still making the thing from... It's, you're making it from nothing, essentially. You're, the, the 3D printer, I, I say this a lot, people look at me weird, but it's as close to magic as we have. We are taking speech and sending it into the world and generating an object on the other, on the other side. Now, the, the 3D printer is just a magic wand at that point. Um, you know, it, it's... So I, I, it, 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 it fails, like, any regulatory scheme that could be, pop, could be dreamt up, you know, uh, how are you going to stop that? It's really hard. And 3D printers have been open source since the beginning of time. So I don't know how... <laughs> like yeah my my prediction for the next paradigm shift is um ammo so already we see a lot of constraints on ammunition availability um and that just like that i mean that's been going on since the obama years yeah like, um, i feel uh, like most of my life has well if been... they let us have the ammo then how will the department of education get theirs <laughs> <sighs> It just seems like most of my life, everyone's been complaining about how hard it is to get or how expensive it is. Right. And yeah. so I feel like eventually there will be another paradigm shift there. Um, yeah, we're uh, there, there's people working on it. I mean, casting your own bullets has been a thing forever. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Melting down statues of tyrants and casting right. your own bullets. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've got people there. There We have some very talented chemists who are taking advantage of every Biden buck that they can to go go to college to learn how to make smokeless powder. So cheers to them. Those guys are awesome. Um, That's oh, awesome. Man. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I don't know how they like I, I went to college for like four days and I just couldn't like I was I was <laughs> in the middle in the military on the GI Bill. I spent like one or two days in class. So I was like, I can't I can't because a bunch of 18 year olds. Oh, my yeah. God. healthcare! <laughs> oh, my God. College. How am I going to pay my loans? You get a job. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I can't like. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> Join the army. You can do it for free. But you know, I it, yeah. it's it's one of those. 
So anyway, I is rant complete. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm gonna put it out there in the next hundred years. I think the ammo paradigm shift will be rail guns. We're gonna start oh God. making rail guns at home, and people yeah. are just gonna be shooting those off. I mean, the the biggest problem with rail guns is the amount of energy you can store yeah. in, a, in something portable. But that's getting like, better all the time. Every 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 couple of years, we have yeah. a revolutionary revolution in battery tech. Yeah, like double uh-huh. capacity doubles. So, I mean, eventually, it's it's inevitable. That might be the only thing keeping me from buying a whole pallet of ammo right now. Right, it's the hope that rail guns will become a thing. No, the uh, <laughs> again, like I'm excited for black powder just because you get it's it's already readily available. All yes. that needs to be done yeah. is to put together a solid. It's almost a commodity. Yeah, right on yeah. how to on how to build it. And then we've got some other stuff that's being played with to sort of utilize that a little better. Uh-huh. It's going to be, uh-huh. I, I can't talk about it too much, but, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's uh-huh. like the, the meme level stuff that we're doing now, it's going to be like that, but like actually usable. So the meme stuff is uh-huh. awesome because <laughs> that's what is attracting so much attention and mm-hmm. engaging so many people on Twitter. Like the, uh, the curb stop challenge. Uh, I don't know. Josh, if you saw that, but uh, no. do you want to explain yeah. the curb stomp cha- challenge to him? So Ivan the troll and is, is is bless him. He's like a gift on Twitter. I, I don't know how he does it. I would lose my mind. Um, but he got into it with some guy on Twitter who's like, "Oh my God, your plastic gun's gonna break. My polymer gun, my polymer Glock is a hundred times better. It's a thousand times stronger." And so there is a gauntlet thrown about. Okay stomp on your Glock as hard as you can and I'll stomp on mine and we'll see which one breaks first. And so the dude does it and to his credit, like he posted the video of him stomping on the Glock and he cracks the little uh, the little at the back of the mag well, that little bit of plastic that's in there, snaps it and uh, like you, you have this really nice visceral crack on the audio this crunch that breaking it's, it's, it's great. But then, uh, so then Ivan comes in with his classic self and uh, you know, with with a nice uh beat of like Cotton Eye Joe just stomping the shit out of his printed Glock 19. Um so much to the point where he's like scratching up the slide and then he goes and mag dumps it. Um so that's I feel like that's that's like the nails are in the coffin it at just, that point. Yeah, just, just through a whole Wow. But I mean, you know, look that this I, I will say like we every, people watch that video and they're like, "Oh, Ivan's a hero." The real hero here is the guy who like challenged, or the guy with the the, the factory Glock, because yeah. uh, like he he committed, right? He put the yeah. video up. He knew that he he'd failed at that point, and then he he you know he continued to discuss it in the comments, and that's a rare thing that you see on Twitter these days. Yeah. They're just like, "Oh, I failed," and then they delete they stop responding or they block everybody they took the l that's right. awesome they, they took the l they owned it and then the best part is like i'm i'm sure you know because he broke his frame i'm sure he went and printed a new one yeah huh so i don't know good times <laughs> that's great we, we, we have fun on twitter i think there's a sense in which um just the future is so unpredictable like that's really the the achilles heel of the state is this trying to get ahead of everything? And the future is so unpredictable that it's like, what is next? I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. And, and, and uh, good luck keeping up with us. Like, it's when, when you, un- especially with the internet, has unleashed the collective consciousness of so many uh, autists that how are you going to stop them all, you know? <laughs> no, it's, it's great because, like, the government can only move at the speed of a sensor, which means somebody has to do something uh-huh. and then someone else has to see it and get all cranky about it. And then write their right. politicians, and then they got to write a bunch of other people to tell them to write their politicians about it before they go and do anything. That's you know that's uh-huh. that's the classic gridlock. That's the speed of government, and that's I think you know that that's probably more efficient than they are actually. So you know the the <laughs> the internet, the gun community, the autists who develop things move at the speed of whatever moves us. So uh-huh. like I I uh, good lord. Uh, I think Brandon Herrera was doing a Twitch stream one day and said, "Hey, you know, three somebody asked him if he could three uh, bullpup a Glock because he hates bullpups, and you know, he uh, he said no, that you can't do that, and I hate you." 
And I saw that and I was like, oh, well, I guess it's time to bulb up a Glock in like a uh, two week, <laughs> two weeks of, uh, of CAD and a couple of days of printing. And I have a bulb up Glock back there on the shelf, right <laughs> there. Oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's, wow. it's just at the, at, at the speed of, of, you know, an autist and patience and calipers <laughs> and measuring. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of wanted to ask about that. Did you have any experience before? Um, so did you do 3D printing first as a hobby, or did you jump right into 3D printing firearms? Um, no, I've been... I, I, I My first printer was one of the original rep wraps. It was... I built it before you could buy them anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I've printed for a long time, sort of in and out. I've never really been serious about 3D printing until we got into the firearm business, and I started to, like pull everything you know to to mix the two um i didn't really have a reason to print before it was always like knickknacks and kid stuff and uh -huh. artsy and craftsy stuff and it was it was fun and interesting but it wasn't like motivating yeah. you know yeah uh, i didn't get motivated to print until i could make something functional with what i printed and and you know beyond cases for my whatever bits of circuit board i cooked up to do whatever thing i was doing you know, but uh -huh. printing firearms now I have a functional reason to print, and it's 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 thoroughly motiv motivating when like the to to continue printing when printing is the core th of the thing. So, uh -huh. yep. Did you have CAD experience before that either, or you just you learned as you went? Roughly, I mean, I I I I knew a little bit of how to operate in CAD. I hadn't done anything with any real success in there. Um. But yeah, my first sort of CAD tutorial was building, was drawing out the low point um, back in 2018. Cool. I think. I think it was, God Lord, it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know how you get started in this. So like you said, you were, you were doing 3D printing before. Was it just like a, you heard about it and you're like, this, this is like, just sounds like fun or, or, uh. Did yeah. you have any conception that this might be a big deal down the line? No, I didn't really put that much thought into it. It was like, oh, hey, they're making, churning out stuff out of plastic. That would be useful. And then I decided I was going to build one. I spent probably, you know, a week and a half learning about it online. This was back in like early 2012. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, figuring out where to go to find things and software and how to flash it to a board and all that. And, uh, Took about a week to figure all that out, and then I went and built one. Took about three weeks after that to, excuse me, to get everything put together. Um, and then so yeah, inside of a month, got my very first printer up and running. Um, mm -hmm. way way back in the day when it was like mildly difficult. Um, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier now because you can just go on Amazon and and spend uh two hundred bucks. But uh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I guess that was really the it for the initiating <laughs> sort of like i like i said i had i had the printer i was using it for this and that but it was never really like the core of the project and so it was mm -hmm. just always an a de or an attachment to oh i can use this to like print a box for this other thing for for this mm -hmm. display that i'm build, building or you know some sort of yeah. like hook to hang up a, a keyboard or something somewhere but you know it, it was it with with the firearm thing it's it's a it's a whole different beast because it's just become the core of the operation so right and and what was it about the firearm printing that captured your imagination um, was it like a philosophical thing or was it just kind of like i don't know something it, else? <laughs> it was i i like the engineering i'm i'm a i'm a nerd for physics so um we start playing with like forces we're like oh that you look at it once and it's like oh that shouldn't work because it's just plastic but then you think about well no plastic is actually a lot stronger than we usually give it credit for so mm -hmm. you know just being able to play with that level of engineering i mean and like we're, we're like i said before we're metal is a far superior material when it comes to firearms but it's also a lot more difficult to work with and it takes a lot, a lot mm -hmm. larger investment and you certainly can't really do it in your like office whereas in mm -hmm. here i've got three printers over here i've got like four more on the other side of the room you know i'm sure i can churn out eight firearms a day if i wanted to <laughs> if i wanted to like make it a factory but um <laughs> you know it's it's just it's a little bit different of a monster just being able to like do it this conveniently um 
Uh-huh. And then just it's like the printing like, press. It's like yeah, they it's, could they could you know copy things before that, right. but just being to do yeah, it so it's, conveniently. It's it's the printing press, but now it's instead of like a thing that takes up an entire room, it's like this little box on your desk. You know? 3D printer go burr. Yep. Yeah. Actually, that there was another question from Jerry Billy. He wanted to know about 3D printing with metal. Okay. And I don't think he means the CNC machine. Right. Um, the short answer is buy a CNC machine, uh, because it'll be cheaper. Yeah. Um, 3D printing with metal takes, like, you can't do it on Ender 3. They, they have, like, metal-infused filaments, but it's junk. Don't waste your time. Hmm. Um, maybe the material will get, will get better in 10 years. I have no idea. Um, but at the moment, it's, it's just, yeah, it's not. Interesting. I didn't even yeah. know that was something anyone even entertained. Yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's PLA, uh, with copper or like bits of me- metallic flake embedded in it, hmm. and then you can print, and it'll be metal-ish looking. Um, and then there are some other filaments where you can send it out to be finished, but then you you still have that extra step of sending something out to be finished, and it'll come back metal, but then you have a whole like regulatory business of, did that company now in the business of manufacturing firearms? Are they going <laughs> to deal with you? You know, did did you just... It, it, it's a whole regulatory mess, and most companies are just going to be like, nah, I'm not going to deal with you. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, why, why, why open up that avenue of, of legal hurdles if, you're, if you, you don't have to? Um, right. And if you want to do it yourself, you're looking at, like, a $100,000 facility that you have to build in order to do this because you need, like, a clean room and a furnace and, like, another $50,000 in hardware on top of a really expensive printer. So hmm. and, and then and then every time you turn the printer on, it's gonna cost you at least a thousand dollars in material to print. So but it's possible. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's it's entirely possible. It's, it's just crazy. gonna get expensive and it's gonna it's gonna stay expensive for like another Is decade. it like injection molding or is it layering? Like no it's it's printer? layering. So what it does is uh you have the you have your, your metal powder um and then uh, the print chamber, and the printer is going to heat the chamber to something just under the melting point of this metal that you're using, and then it's going to lay down a layer of it, and it's going to use a laser to excite the metal just mm-hmm. over its, its melting point to get it to bind together, and then it's going to do a thousand layers of that, and at the end, you're going to have this part that's caked in all of this loose powder that's like bound together powder, and then you've got to take that powder, and you've got to finish it in a furnace, and then in the furnace you've got to infuse other metal into it to fill the voids um, that the, that the, the binding oh. agent left. Okay. So it, it's, sure. it's, a, it's a whole thing, like <laughs> yeah. Okay, well you, after Durabelli gets rich from Bitcoin <laughs> right. he can do that. Yeah. All right. if, if, look, if you've got you know, 10 or 12 Bitcoin, and you want to get us into 3D printing metal guns, like hit me up. I will take your Bitcoin and we'll do this. <laughs> you know. Do you have kind of a philosophical, um, I guess, or ideological push behind you, or is it kind of a kind of just a, like you said, you just got into it because it was a fascinating. No, oh, I, I think project. I but, think the or, so the engineering attracted me to it the sort of philosophy developed over time because there sure. was once upon a time where i wasn't entirely comfortable with like oh yeah sure felon should be able to buy a gun off the counter through through uh-huh. the, over the counter through the mail why not um yeah you know and i've sort of come around on that of like okay no actually the law is wrong on this one and we shouldn't be treating uh-huh. people that way um so yeah it's it's like there was a time but uh i, I feel like we've philosophically we've come uh come around the bend um uh-huh. so yeah i mean really the the you know and and it's sort of i guess the i'm i'm trying to put it into words um i mean really the, these are the if if you are a person right if you your life has any value then you should be entitled to the implements to defend it. Right. And, Absolutely. you know, so I, I mean, unregulated firearms? Yes. Unregulated mm. tomahawks? Why not? 
unregulated M1 Abrams? Okay, fine. You know, I I don't I I feel like you know I took that pill and once I is I don't actually care anymore. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, I, I've sort uh-huh. of I've I've sort of had to commit to the whole idea just to maintain that logical consistency. Otherwise, it would drive me insane. But uh, <laughs> you know, I I feel like. I feel like that's sort of the grounding philosophy is that everyone is everyone who is someone should have the means. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. have the means if they want them, I guess right, would be the right. only, only caveat. Yeah. 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 That's such a, such a fascinating thing. How like, um, especially in this, uh, crypto and tech, no techno, uh, space is that there's uh there's some people who get into it because they see something philosophically that they're like this is something that needs to happen this is a problem that needs to be overcome um and and uh and this is and this technology can can be used to overcome it and there's some people who just get fascinated with the technology like uh you know, like our friend Darabelli who who got into bitcoin not because he had a uh, a beef with the federal reserve but because he wanted to make some money and then along the way, he's learning how it works, uh, uh, you know, the technology and also the philosophy. And he does start to develop uh, philosophy alongside of it. So it's, it's interesting how people come in both directions uh, to, to these kind of works. And, and yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Like I said, I, I, I was in the, the, the crypto space like I was in the printing space. And uh, it's, uh, you know, early, at least early on. Like I was in it, I had some. I didn't really know how to use it or know anything about it, and I wasn't really investing any time in 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 like figuring it out. Aside uh-huh. from that initial, like this is how you get Bitcoin, and, and uh-huh. then uh, you know now now that like we're we're using Bitcoin to do like project development. People can send Bitcoin, they can donate it to developers, and so uh-huh. I've I'm I'm now running a couple instances of BT, BTC Pay server to facilitate all those transactions. And I'm running it for my store, so you know, uh, uh-huh. people can buy like patches and stuff with Bitcoin to 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 support development efforts and various developers across the community and and all of our like infrastructure, community infrastructure stuff. So it's you know now that I have a use for it and I'm I'm learning a lot more about it now that I'm getting more and more involved in it, I'm starting to see a lot of the philosophy that's over there. So it's yeah. it's uh. Yeah, it's it's certainly strange how that stuff sort of crops up and how you start to like yeah. how it seeps in around the edges, I guess. <laughs> uh-huh. But uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Like, yeah, it's uh sometimes something grips you for some reason that's completely unrelated. Mm-hmm. And then eventually you start to see the way it like solves real world problems or the way that real world issues inter- intersect with it. And uh I mean, yeah, there's yeah, there's some of us who are fine with uh, living in a ivory tower. I say hypothetically, my house is not made of ivory. I do not have that sort of money. But uh, you know, who who are cool with like love talking about ideas and and stuff like that. But then the very uh, the very fair criticism of us is is we sit around thinking and talking all day, but we don't really have much. You know, we don't really do anything. And then uh, guys like you come along and start doing things, and we're like, "Yeah, yeah, that we want that. <laughs> we endorse that. That's that's what we're gonna do." <laughs> right? Kind of good with it. Without people talking, the idea doesn't start. So you know, it's all good. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been trying to decide on a first project, mm-hmm. and I feel like you know you can make arguments based off of what. Uh, you know which tool functionally would you use or would you need but you can also make arguments i'm sure based off of which one is easy or which one will teach you the most uh, right. do you have any thoughts on that well where so you're starting to put, put it together are you talking like your first print or your first build first printer okay, <laughs> and <okay>. build <laughs> so your first project should be like get your printer calibrated yeah, yeah level, level the bed <laughs> that was part of the guide yeah, yeah that was part of the guide i was using so assuming yep. that's done yeah uh then print like a nut and bolt you thread together yeah make sure that works yeah (laughs) yep um because these are all like dimensional tolerances are really important when you're dealing with guns uh sure after that i mean it's whatever you can get parts for at this at this particular moment um everything's kind of hard to get glocks are really really expensive 
Um, like I usually tell people start with the Glock or an AR-15 just because those are what most people have the most familiarity with. And there's all measure of, of build guides out there. So it's really hard to get lost. Um, when you get into something more obscure, like a tech nine or something, it, it's like, it looks cool. Cause no one else knows what it is really, but you're also going to struggle for like a week. Cause you don't know what, how to put in like the, uh, the sear, how, how to install the sear properly or something. So, you know, it's, it's, it's it's hard to say which one where 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 you want to start with now though because everything just so hard to get. Um, I don't yeah. know. I would probably still say an AR-15 because you probably got one that you can strip down for parts yeah. if you really want to get fancy. Yep. Like we've seen people start with the FGC9. So yeah, it looks pretty looks pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, it it seems intimidating. It's it's not overly and. Uh, it's not it doesn't require any firearm parts and so that's also a nice you know not not yeah. a limiting factor anymore um you know um. current market so <laughs> i don't know if you really want to be motivated <laughs> you can uh, you could start there so i know the the fgc guide had talked about like building your own ammo for those uh mm -hmm. lucky few over in europe what um i'm like impressed so in in a country where you can't just go out and buy bulk reloading supplies mm -hmm. um does it does that work does it turn out good is it comparable to the quality of ammunition yeah what, I do, mean, they, what do they actually do for projectile well it's it's standard nine millimeter bullets they're so the way uk laws work um firearms are generally prohibited and Ammunition is gen generally prohibited, but ammunition components and, you know, sub components and sub assemblies of firearms vary based on country. So you can mm -hmm. buy nine millimeter bullets from one country and powder from another country and casings from another country and primers from somewhere else and then print a reloading jig to, you know, assemble all of that. Um, that does like that. That's how it's being done by several folks uh, who we spoke with so it is it's entirely possible to do it's just a couple a, a couple degrees it's it's magnitudes harder than it is but you know if you're a motivated individual you can certainly get it done um that's amazing i think the the higher barriers to entry over there has produced some really motivated minds mm -hmm. to in fgc it's, it was really interesting watching um like the the documentary and everything and, and just mm -hmm. kind of reading up more on those guys over there like they have just such a commitment to like really fine tolerances and really quality product it was it was like on a whole other level it was awesome mm -hmm. yeah it's that it's, i mean and this is something else like when you're doing something like this you can't be lazy about tolerances it's yeah really, <laughs> really important <laughs> Yep. But uh mm. yeah, I don't know. It it seems like they're uh they're 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 having some success. There's other places in the world where we're still not able to uh quite get there yet. Like you can still build the firearm, but you know, ammunition's difficult. And when we get to the point which is is again, it's inevitable but, like people are going to school for it right now, you know, where they're able to manifest um you know, ammunition from scratch in their bathrooms, you know, I think when we get to that point, it'll just be entirely, in, entirely unstoppable. So yeah. Oh yeah. Modern ammunition is the biggest holdup because chemistry is hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's like moonshine and guns, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Which, which funnily enough was how we got one of our like most popular national sports. So I wonder what, yeah. you know, what we're going to generate here. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 So uh what other uh projects and interests do you have? Oh god. <laughs> um I do a lot of tech work. I uh I, I code a lot or I try to anyway. Um I write a lot of different just little programs to, to sort through my day, stuff I tinker with. Um but yeah, I mean this this like I've sort of dropped most of my other hobbies because this is sort of just taking them over. Like I, I've always been a tinkerer, uh -huh. 
So I always like messing with stuff and taking stuff apart. And this is just like a, a, a more leveled up version of that, I guess, um, mm -hmm. where I just get to play with guns all day. Like, yeah. got just a pile of parts over here that's uh, <laughs> guns waiting to be built. So, <laughs> wow, very cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> all the other hobbies are gone. I don't have time for games anymore. <laughs> I'm building guns. Uh, well, we got the two. What, what's uh, Darabelli's favorite question to end? Uh, his, uh, what are, uh, what is it? What book are you reading or, or what book or thing are you reading right now? I think it's like something like that. <laughs> um, it's going to sound like self aggrandizing, but the guide dot control P dot com. Uh, <laughs> All right. I, we're we're working on some revisions, so I've been up to my eyeballs sure. in that for like the best better better part of the last month. Um, just right. uh, getting all the the technical details down. You're reading but, uh, and writing it. Yeah, it's uh, I'm going cross eyed. <laughs> um, but it was it was already good. It's gonna get a little better. Um, good. A little more easy to follow. We're doing like a whole video tutorial section to go along with it. So we're filming sure. all that over here but uh um nice yeah yeah um yeah that's what it, <laughs> that's all yeah. i'm reading for no that's life. good for sure because oh, it's What's really your... just an aggregation of of other other good content and i think that's why it's yeah. so useful is um uh, people gonna hop in yeah. and get kind of a right uh up to speed yeah. more quickly what's, hey, it's, it's hard what's your... for people to follow um like a lot of other places there this guide exists in a hundred other places but it's always in a different format written by someone who isn't like wildly pro-gun so people oh, are sure. hesitant yeah so what's your wild crazy 10-year plan for the whole control pew project oh god uh I mean, eventually we're going to get raided by the ETF. That's like an in inevitable. Um, well, you know, I mean, there's like it. De it depends on which which uh, which branching universe theory you subscribe to. Because there's one where we like buy an ice cream truck, and every day we just pull up to the ATF office and we hand them a box and ask them if this is a machine gun. Um, <laughs> and like it doesn't even need that. Like it could just be a box full of rocks. We're like, hey, is this a machine gun? And then we show up. Like <laughs> we do this for like four or five years, and then we show up with like an actual machine gun. And they're like, hey, is this a machine gun? And they're like, no. Like yes, they said it. <laughs> we got it it's on camera. They said it. It's official. Luke, you know, we got the letter right here. Post on Arfcom. <laughs> Start selling actual M16s. It's fine, you know. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I mean, we're we we're we're all over the place. I think in another decade, you're gonna see just a much larger uh, community. Um, you know, we're as I said, we were. I think on, on Keybase, we peaked at like twenty some thousand. Uh, currently, we're af after having set up our whole new thing. Um, our our chat is down to like ten thousand, and and growing by about another couple hundred today so we're climbing our way back out of the depth um but you know i'm all over social media all over everywhere else and i think i will be until they delete me again and then i'll just roll new accounts so said they, right. the whole thing is just designed to bring people to the website and that's designed to bring people into the community and into 3d printing so yeah you know social medias are expendable but i think control right. will still be doing that it'll still be existing out there on the social media space sort of passing info around um ra fundraising for community for developers yeah. for development and uh sort of spreading the gospel i guess yeah i think yeah i think that's the um sometimes we have these grand visions of liberation and and we'll do this and we'll convince this and we'll win this election and we'll do this and uh Sometimes it's as simple as, like, just look around at what's happening right now. You know, let's get current eventy with the, uh, you know, the sickness uh, mm -hmm. that is going. You know, like, did did it take bills? Did it take uh, some big revolution? No, it just took the fact that eventually people just stopped doing it. Mm -hmm. 
people just stop wearing masks. They stop doing this. They stop doing like they stop following the six foot guidelines. They just started wanting to go to parks again. Eventually, you just they just have to. And now they're all acting like it was their idea to open up. Like you know, like they're all saying you could do this. Like I what's, feel like that's what's gonna happen with with the three D printing guns thing. Is eventually they're just gonna be like, yeah, no, 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 we're allowing it now. We think it's you know just follow these guidelines. They're gonna try and make it seem like it was their idea to allow it. Right. Like, a, like it's it's a it's a you know the cat's out of the bag you can't you can't stop it <laughs> yeah the the i'm i'm sure that's probably inevitable some some measly morsel of regulations that the NRA will sign off on cuz they don't like us anyway mm. um and and it'll right. get written into law about how you have to i don't know i'm you know i, I was going to speculate something but i'm not going to cuz it might give someone an idea so uh <laughs> I mean, th- I'm sure they'll inject some tiddly little regulation into the space that allows them to look like they have some kind of control mm-hmm. over what's going on. And mm-hmm. I, I, I would hope that the, I, I guess, sort of the philosophy starts to embed itself a little deeper into people, um, kind of like it did me, of just stop caring. You know, stop, stop, stop paying so much attention about what the what the regulation says is right or wrong and just do what you think is right or wrong trust your own judgment you know more yeah. than a politician or your neighbor or you know anyone else whose opinion doesn't matter to you in your day-to-day life do the thing that you think is right and you know yeah. sort of commit to that for every other part of your life <laughs> i guess mm-hmm. getting deep here <laughs> yeah it's good Are you guys hearing me, Joseph? Just yeah. Okay, because I, I don't see my waves moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that's a weird feeling for you, but you're actually not talking. Oh. Yeah. So oh. there's no waves moving. Oh. I know you don't usually go this long without talking. That must be very <laughs> difficult for you. <laughs>